Hello there, my mate Vince here, and in this episode today we're back on the Amazon return box that I bought a couple of months ago. So we're going to be digging deep into it, picking out some more items and attempting to fix it. So why do people send these things back to Amazon? What is really wrong with them? Hopefully some of the items might be interesting and hopefully some of the fixes might be interesting. So let's get started right away. We have an Xbox controller, but it's not actually a Microsoft one, it's a Power A one, but it's quite clever. It's got some features that are quite interesting. It's called Spectra Infinity, and it's a wired controller. Now, most people would dislike that, but some people would like it because it means you don't have to keep worrying about batteries. Nice long lead on it, some nice touches, like this little... Uh, breakaway one here so if you were to trip over it hopefully this would break rather than dragging your xbox off the uh whatever surface is on now having a, a quick check on the computer i haven't actually connected up to the xbox yet but on the computer it all appears to work apart from one thing if and if you have like the elite controller you will know that you can adjust how far these go down so basically these are like analog they're not just digital on and off if you do it a small bit something will happen a small bit. If you do it a lot, something will happen a lot. For example, if you're in a racing game, then if you were using this for your accelerate, if you do it a little bit, it will go slow, do it a lot, it will go fast. But when it comes to maybe first person shooter games, then when you press this down, it might be firing. Now there is a lot of travel on that. So what they've done here is like the Elite controller, you can adjust the amount. There's three different amounts here. And if it's all the way over here, can you see it goes down less? Yeah. It goes down less. Can you see it's about the size of my finger there? But if we put it all the way over here, then it will go down more than that. Yeah. Now, on the computer, one side is like 33% this way, and then in the middle it would be like 60%, and up top it will be 100. But on, I think it's this side here, it will always be at like 4, 5, or 6%, even when it's off. And then even if you put it to the middle setting, it near enough goes to 100. And on the lowest setting, it's about 60. And listen... I can hear something. So maybe that's it. I'm just going to show you it on the computer. Right, this is a game controller tester app, and if I use the good side, you can see that when we do it this way, it only goes as far as there, and then if I move it to the middle, it will go as far as here, and all the way it will go to here. But yet, can you see it goes back to zero? Have a look at this side here, it's on 6%, I'm not even touching it. And if we go to the middle, I think that's up full, one second now. Right, that's the low one. The low one is 60 something percent. The middle one goes all the way to 98 percent, and then the other one's 100 percent. But yet, when we let go, it never goes down to zero. So, let's see if we can fix that. Right, there's loads of Phillips screws around the back. So, I think what's happened here, it was probably in the middle setting or the, uh, the setting where it's up the most, and it was probably dropped. So, I don't actually think this is going to be fixable. Right now. Ah, so there's a little screw here. So that's what was rattling around on the inside. Interesting. Now, this was the faulty one. Why are you not resetting? I think I can see what it is. I think I know the problem. So let me zoom in and see if you can spot it. It also does clever things like you can do LEDs and you can also remap the buttons from the back here as well. LEDs, you can change the color from green to other colors around the edge and the buttons. Right, remember, this is the faulty side here, and this is the good side. So, can you see any difference between them? I'll tell you in a few seconds. So, this is the good one. This is the faulty one. If you haven't spotted it, I'll zoom in more, which will probably give it away. So, this is the good one. And this here is the faulty one. Can you see this has just pushed out? So it's been dropped. Ready? There we go. I think that's all it requires. I would say now that is going to work. How do these even work? Are they Hall Effect sensors? No, they're not, are they? They're these little things. They're potentiometers here. Okay. Yeah, it's a bit like a thumbstick, but just with, uh, you know, one axis. Well, I don't know. I can't see where that screw's supposed to go. So maybe it was just left out there from, 
from the very beginning. I thought maybe the drop knocked it out, but I can't, uh, I can't see. Well, as far as I'm concerned, they look symmetrical on both sides. So I think I am just gonna leave the screw out and hope that maybe it was dropped in there by accident when it was assembled. Yeah, because all of these here are gonna be where where these go, aren't they? Yeah, here and here are where these ones go. Right, let's put it back together and see if it's now working. And there we have it, 0%, one nice easy fix. So that's the lowest setting. Let's go to the next setting up. There we go, 70 odd percent and 100%. Well, that was a nice easy fix to start off on. So let's move on to the next item, which I think is an interesting item, but will it be an interesting item that can be fixed? Kodak Scanza. It's about 138 pound in Amazon right now. You can still buy it prime next day delivery. And what it does is it takes your negatives and it saves them onto an SD card here. So this was all included. Uh, obviously negatives are before the days of digital cameras. This will take slides and everything, little negative slides. There's all these different adapters that you can put in it at the bottom. And the idea is it's supposed to show the image here. You hit this button here and it's supposed to save it to the SD card, just like that. Then you pop the SD card into your computer and you've got all your slides in a digital format. So it's a really clever idea. I mean, there might be other ways of doing it, but this does seem very, very simple. The only labor uh, part is the fact that you've got to put through your slides. But as you can see here, nothing's happening. Now, I thought it might be a display problem, but when I do take captures and I put the SD card into my computer, it's coming up with white screens. There's no photos there, it's just a white screen. So it is capturing the white screen here. Let's turn it on again. Right, so color negative 135. I believe that's it, 35 mil film, but I could be wrong there. But if I go to gallery, you will see that it will just take white pictures here, you see? Yeah, so let me uh, get out of that. Let's go to home, capture. I mean, I've had a look at a couple of YouTube videos and it should be as simple as moving this through here. You can see the camera's up here. We should be seeing the image right now. And then you just go to this here. I'm sure it came up before with, uh, Saving, there you go, saving. Yeah, so it should have saved that now and it will have saved that, but there's nothing there. So I think it's gonna be interesting. I, I don't know, it's like the camera's not connected to here. Do I think it's fixable at this moment in time? No, I don't, but the very fact it looks brand new does give me hope. Now this is like fate because uh, normally you'd be like, oh dearie me, where am I gonna find some negatives to test this? But unfortunately I'm going through a really stressful time at the moment and I don't wanna talk about it in my videos because uh, that's not what my video is about. But basically, long story short, is that uh, I've got solicitors after me for in excess of 40,000 pounds due to subsidence. I'm not gonna say where, it's not my property. Uh, and uh, I'm having to get all my info out about when I bought the house and stuff like that. I'm having to do a lot of learning about legal stuff. And uh, basically, in that box, there was these negatives, and I don't know why these negatives are in that box, because I've got a box of photos from years ago when I was at university and before that, and um, when I went to Australia, I've got those in a box upstairs, so I don't know why these are loose. So I'd be quite curious as to find out what's on here. I'm interested to see what it is, so hopefully you can fix that, and then we can work out what's what. So let's take out the SD card, and let's see how we can take this thing apart. So we've still got the little protective covers on the bottom here. Maybe there's screws hidden under that. But let's see if there's any, yeah, there we go, we've got screws here. Yeah, two screws. So we're gonna have two screws here as well. So now we just have to undo four Phillips screws. I'm really looking forward to seeing the inside of this. Now, if you're interested in the inside of things, that means you're probably into circuit boards, which leads me on nicely to the sponsor of this video. Imagine a world where your imagination has no limits, where your dreams of creating cutting edge electronics come to reality. That, my friends, is a world PCB way opens up for you. Too much? I enjoyed it. Okay. How about this? PCBWay have over a decade experience in the PCB industry. They have state-of-the-art manufacturing facilities and they use the latest technology to produce high-quality PCBs that meet your specification. At PCBWay, they have a range of services including PCB prototyping, PCB assembly, flexible PCBs, high-density PCBs, CNC machining and 3D printing. So whether you're an electronics enthusiast, an inventor, or an entrepreneur, PCB Way is your one-stop shop for all things PCB. 
So a massive thank you to PCB Way for sponsoring the My Mate Vince channel. Links to PCB Way will be in the description down below. Now let's carry on with the dismantling of this Kodak scanner and let's see whether it can or can't be fixed. I wonder if there's a hidden screw in the middle there or is that a molding thing? This has to pop out, I'm sure, because what's it screwed into? Seems to be held at the front here, but I can't see any screws holding it at the front. I wonder, is there a screw underneath here? Yes, there is. There you go, just down here. Right, we need a long, thin screwdriver for that. Right now, this should lift out, which it does. Lovely, okay. Right, so there's just a big heavy weight here to stop it from falling over and to make it look more, feel more premium, I think. So what we got going on? Ah, there's a little, some sort of sensor down here. Maybe it's not sensing that the slides are in. Oh, we've got more screws anyway. Do you know what? I don't know why, I'm really, really excited by this one. Would this be a backlight? So we should see, I didn't notice if that came on or not. Maybe it's a backlight issue. Does that look like a light? It does, doesn't it? That looks like a backlight. Let's add power to this again and see if it lights up. Put the SD card back in. Actually, is the SD card in the right position? Yeah, open. It's not locked. Let's turn this on. Yeah, you do just have to hold it down for a few seconds. So if we go to here, capture, select. So surely now that should be on so we can, oh look, you can see what's going on. Look, it is working, look at that. It is working. It is working. So why are you not seeing the slides? Because the backlight's not working. That's correct, isn't it? Because now when we put that down there, it doesn't see anything. But if we were to do this, or if we were to put our own light there, you can now, oh wow, I can see, I can see. Right, backlight's not working, fantastic. Let's uh, work that out. Ah, oh, I'm loving this one. These sort of fixes are the best. So now I need to get to the other side of this. <gasps> what do you think? Can you see anything that may be wrong? So we've got the backlight here, cable going up, wrapped around here. What do you think? Do you think it's not pushed in enough? I think it's not pushed in enough. You ready? Oh, you beauty. Oh, my, my. I think, I think that is it. Everybody's gonna think these videos are fake, but I promise you, because you know how much I struggle in other videos that this is not fake. So if you've never seen my channel before, I promise you this isn't fake. Right, okay, come on now. I know I've uh, got my hopes up probably too prematurely. Let's see, come on now. Yes, we got lights. We have lights, brilliant. Okay, now, be careful here, Vince. Let me just see what's happening here. Oh yes, look at this now. Can I show any of these? One second, let me put it off camera. Can't show that one, my wife's in a bathing cosy. She wouldn't like me to show that one. I'll show that one there. Oh, I wonder where this was taken. I think this was Centre Parks. Oh, when the kids were really young. I can't even see who that is because there's a drop of water, I think, on the lens. Yeah, but that's me. 
Right, okay. And then you go to, so you line it up. Why have we got a gap on that side though? Maybe I've got the wrong, maybe I've got the wrong one in there for 35 mil. No, here we go, that's it, there you go. Oh wow, look at that. And now uh, that should be saved onto the SD card. Right, let me just see if there's anything else suitable. Do you know what, let's put it back together. Oh, amazing. Amazing. It's kind of weird, it's like I'm happy with everything apart from the predicament I've got myself in at the moment, or I've been put into at the moment. But yeah, whenever I see old pictures, it's uh, it's a weird thing. Actually, it kind of makes me sad, which is weird because I think I'm enjoying life as much as I was then. But uh, yeah, it just makes me makes me sad. I'm wondering, should I put a little bit of glue on that? Because I think it's probably been dropped and then it's just uh, it's gone down. So let me get a little bit of glue stick. I don't think it's going to make too much difference, but I'll uh, I'll get a little bit just to put on it. I don't want to melt the whole thing. Well, I've just splattered it on the side there and on the side there, and I've just cleaned it away from the plastic. So if it needs to come off in the future, a bit of IPA and it will pop off, no bother. Right, let's put the fake base on. This is what gives it all the weight. Isn't that amazing how we associate heavy things with quality? Right, I've looked through them and yeah, there's nothing that interesting. Remember back in these days here, you never knew if it was a good picture or not. So a lot of the pictures on the film would be kind of wasted. You'd be happy if you had a few good pictures out of the whole film. But uh, yeah, then when we went to, I think this was like the first time we ever went to Centre Parks. So uh, this was, I don't know, I think Chloe was probably about two-ish, maybe three. I don't, I, I'm not very good with ages. But so that would have been 14, 14 or 15 years ago. So that's when I didn't have as much grey hair. But look, it really is. Uh, it's a good little device, isn't it? So let's take a picture of that there and see, because it does look a little bit washed out and stuff, but I suppose it's going to, isn't it? Because it is just taking a picture of that. I presume the quality is not going to be great. So let's just take a picture. And we'll put it onto my PC and see what it looks like. And let's do that one there. Right, okay, let's take the SD card out and see what, uh, what they actually look like. So that's the first picture, but the thing is, it's blurred because there was a bit of camera shake and also there was a bit of water or something on the lens. But look at all the fibres around the place and some of the fibres go from picture to picture. So obviously I've got some dust and fibres on the lens and I've also got some dust and fibres on the negatives as well. So uh, yeah, I need to get the air blow out and go tss, tss, and squirt all, around, squirt air all around there to get rid of all this stuff here. It shows you how important it is. That was uh, a lovely cat that we had years ago called Hattie. Fortunately she's no longer with us. She wasn't actually our cat. She lived up the road, but then they moved away, and uh, she adopted our uh, she adopted our house. But anyway, there we go. So you can see a nice bright image. And uh, is it going to be as good as the original picture? No. But is it bad? Not at all. No. I mean, you know, you'd be happy with that picture there. So I think it's uh, I think it's a great little device. But you can see there's a fibre here. If you have a look here, there's a nice big fibre. And if I go onto this one, the same fibre is there across my head. So, in fact, you can't see the fibres, can you? But take my word for it. There you go, you can see the fibres there now. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to clean that up now. I, I don't have to do that on camera. But what a nice little fix! So I think it was probably dropped during shipping or at the manufacturer or even when the customer had it. And from day one, it never worked. But what a clever little device. I'll probably get hundreds of messages saying they've been around for years and they only cost about £5, yet this one costs near enough 140 But still, it's a nice, simple, easy way for do, to, to, to get your negatives digital. I can really see the appeal. Right. Let's move on to another item. All right, believe it or not, there's another Power A Xbox controller in there. Different design on this one, much more lightweight, less features. But guess what? It's doing the same thing on the left trigger. But yet it hasn't got that design where you can alter how much it gets pressed down. Let me show you. Right, so you can see it's 5% there, but it will vary. And sometimes it will go to zero, and then other times it will uh, go up to 12%. 
Right now it's behaving. Oh, there you go. Look, can you see? It's kind of like stick drift, but trigger drift. 3%, zero. Climbing. I don't think it's a major problem, but that's the only thing I can see that's wrong with it. It's behaving itself right now. Well, I tried about 50 more times and it just won't, uh, it won't do it again. So, I think it is actually fixed, but I'm going to take it apart just to see what's on the inside because it might become more obvious. See, the problem is maybe when you actually start using it, the problem will come back. When I first of all plugged it in, it was all the way at 12%. And it didn't feel sticky, you know, this looks too new to have a load of gunk on it. Right, so it was this one here. So I think it's just going to be a case of giving it a quick spray. I can't see what would have caused that unless there was some contamination in here which is now gone. Ooh. There's a bit of plastic there. Unless, of course, that was sat in the bottom of that and it wasn't allowing it to... Uh, it wasn't uh, allowing it to go down fully. I think it's unlikely, though. Right, I'm going to get the Deoxit spray, the fader one, and just spray it in there. I don't know if any of it's going to make its way into it. Ah, oh, my beautiful Deoxit. Available for sponsorship. I'd happily sponsor Deoxit. I mention it in every video anyway. They don't need to sponsor me. I'm, they get it for free. I don't know if any of that's going to work its way in. There we go. Well, I'm going to put this away, do that about 50 times, and then uh, give it one more go and move on to the next item. Highly unlikely, but there is a bit of plastic swarf just here, more than that side, just in case it was a little bit on the big side and it was kind of fouling the upward press of it. I'm going to scrape that back. I don't think it's anything to do with that because it seems to be jumping around, but can you see that there? See, it's bigger than the one on that side. That's more, f that's flat here. Oh, this one does stick out a little bit. Not much so, but a little bit. Well, I don't think I'm going to waste any more time on this. I'm just going to uh, put it back together and just show you it working because the thing is, even before I took it apart, it was showing 0%. So I'm not really proving anything here. Maybe just by using the trigger, it freed itself up. But when I first of all plugged it in, it was 12%, then it dropped to 5 If it was plastic swarf, would it be that variable? I'm not too sure. Maybe if you were to use this for a few more hours, the fault might come back and then you would be actually able to fault find it if it was persistently there. But when it's intermittent, it's a bit of a nightmare and it could be numerous different things. So I don't think I'm gonna waste my time on it. Anyway, I'm just gonna show you it working and then that we'll move on to the next item. Well, as expected, because it was working before I took it apart, at the end, after I hit it multiple times, it's working fine. So yeah, I'm not really sure what caused that there. It could be a bit of plastic swarf or Maybe it was just to clean enough to deoxy. Maybe it was just using it a few times. I reckon it's probably more likely to be some sort of plastic swarf got stuck somewhere. Right, let's move on to the next one. Right, next up we have this Nightcore IntelliCharger New i4. Basically, it's a battery charger. So I've got a AAA and some AA's in here, all rechargeable batteries. And it's completely dead, whether I've used the mains lead or whether I use a 12 volt power supply in here. Good thing about this is it does do many different batteries. So you can see here 18650, but the ones I'm working at at the moment are uh, these ones down here. So uh, yeah, what's interesting is this is my bench power supply. I have got it set to 12 volts, well 11.89. And when I plug it in here, it drops all the way down to 1.43. And the current is 1.7 amps. So I'm wondering if we have a short. If I was to plug in the mains, which I have already done, 
nothing happens. So this is my Xbox lead. This one didn't come with a lead. It did do originally, but remember these are Amazon returns, so the lead wasn't in here. If I plug it in, it's not doing anything. So there's no lighting up. Nothing happens if I hit the buttons. So it looks like it's completely dead. So let's take it apart, see if we can see anything that's obvious with it. So I presume there's gonna be screws hidden under here. Yes, there is. Now, I bet this has something to do with the, I bet this is more complicated. I bet it's something to do with the AC side of it. Well, so I have to undo these, otherwise these are not gonna come out. Oops. Right, so there's a little plug that goes to the board at the front that's stopping it from coming out. So let's unplug it from here. There we go. Now, do you know what I didn't actually test? I didn't actually test to see whether there was voltage on the batteries. It could be just this front display that's gone. But I think it would be, I think it'd be unlikely. Right now, before we do anything, let's see if, let's see if we've got any voltage in these caps here, because they still might be live. They might give me a bit of a nasty shock. I'm okay, it's only 1.4 volts. So they're okay to work on. Anything else here that's gonna give me a shock? What's that output one up here? 16 volts, so that's fine. Right, so I'm happy to work on that. Well, first things first, let's see. So we've got an opto isolator here. Let's have a look at this fuse, see if the fuse is still intact. The fact it's not working through here as well, though, says it's, it's gonna be something more, uh, must be linked to both sides. Let's try the fuse, though. All right, fuse is okay. So I suppose we need to plug it in and see if we get voltage at the capacitors. Well, no, we know, we know there's a short, don't we? Let's have a look, see if there's a short on here. So we have got... We're just on continuity. The middle pin goes to here. And then the outer pin... Hold on a minute. Yeah, and then the outer pin's these two. So, have we got a short between these two? Let's just go on to resistance. No, we haven't. It doesn't want to settle down there. What's that about? That's weird. Right, let's add voltage back into it. 12 volts. Maybe we could get the flur cam out. So do I have 12 volts here? No, I don't. My meter's saying 1.4 volts, and yet this is saying 0.9 of a volt. So something must, oh, here we go, something's getting warm. Ooh, yes. Do you know what, Vince? Don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. Let's get the flur cam out, and then something's getting warm. It might be a diode. Quick, get the flur cam out before it all explodes. I've never had a successful flur cam. Result. Come on, come on, this might be the first time my mate Vince does a flare cam and it works. Come on. Yes, I can see heat. 55 degrees. Where are you? Where are you? I think I already know it's the diode. It is whatever you are right here. So what are you there? You are that weird diode. Right. Excellent. My mate Vince has found something on the flare cam. Now, I'm going to save that. It's getting nicely warm. I'm going to unplug that. I'm going to save that for a little bit later because I've got to watch one of the last episodes with Manifest with my wife and we've been watching it for over a year now. So I'm going to come back to that and we'll have a closer look at that diode, see what's going on. 
All right, next day now, another episode of Manifest done and dusted. I need two left to go. So, the diode in question. I don't think I've ever had a diode fail. Oh, no, I had one in the power supply once along with other stuff. But you can see there, short that way, under one ohm. And same there, short that way, under one ohm. Looking up on it, it has a uh, SS28. It's a shot key diode. So they are available for sale. So uh, let's pop it out just to see what's what, because remember we've got two inputs here. And I think what happens is, after the transformer here, we've got two wires, one goes through the diode. So I'm thinking if I take the diode off, it should still work. Let me zoom in and show you. It should still work with the actual low voltage power supply. Yeah, so can you see the low voltage will come in from, uh, see from here, so this is the positive, isn't it? See, plus 12 volts, goes through the diode and it works its way down this way, that side of the diode. Now these two are the ones that come from the wires from the uh, transformer here. And can you see that this one is just the negative going up to here, the ground. And this one will be the positive and it goes through this diode here. So if this diode's failed, I'm a little bit confused how it's uh, knocking everything out because if we've got, for example, 12 volts here and 12 volts here, why does it make a difference? Do you see what I mean? That's not connected to ground. I'm not too sure. Maybe it's something else that's putting it on and for some reason it's just causing the diode to heat up. Let's take off that diode. I mean, it's very close to here, but that cap is not causing a short. Let's get some hot air, pop the diode off and see if the problem problem uh, goes away. It's actually marked up on the board here. Just using some isopropyl alcohol to clean away the flux. All right, let's see now if the pads themselves are shorted. Well, I'll tell you what, let's go straight onto the diode to begin with. Yeah, fully shorted, same both uh, both sides, you see. Interesting. That's kind of weird. So, the pads here are not shorted. Right, let's put 12 volts back into it and see if we have any... Uh, well, let's see if it's taking 12 volts because beforehand it was dropping to one volt. So we've got 11.91 volts, plug it in here. Let's see what it's doing now. Yeah, 11.91 volts at 0 0.022 of an amp. Interesting. Right, let me just put it back to, no, see, I wanna see if I was to put power into it, it shouldn't explode, should it? We should just get an output voltage on these two wires. Is that is that correct? Right, I am going to put voltage in, mains voltage into it, but I'm going to make sure my hand is nowhere nowhere near it, because I'm just curious as to see if we do have voltage here. So don't copy what you see in these videos, taken purely for entertainment. If I touch this, I will be electrocuted. So uh, plugging it in now, but I'm not plugged in here yet. I won't be putting my hands near, near anything. I hope it doesn't... Hold on one second, there's no load anywhere. Is that going to cause a problem, because it's not going to go through there? If I just do it for a few seconds, it should be okay, shouldn't it? I'll risk it. Right, I am going to, because I feel a little bit nervous about leaning over and doing this, I'm gonna bring the extension lead in and I'm gonna plug it in from a different direction so it doesn't, uh, so if it does explode for whatever reason, my face isn't over it. And I'm just, I just wanna measure these two points here. Hold on, the thing I'm not sure about is, I know on a normal transformer it's AC, but it should still be AC, shouldn't it? So where does it get rectified to DC? Yeah, 
Is it the diodes down here? See, that's, that's the bit that confuses me, because uh, rectifier, it's going to be AC, isn't it? Because DC doesn't work on a transformer. The problem I've got is, it's not like a linear transformer. This is a, this is different. This is like a, a really high frequency one, and I don't know if it behaves the same, but as far as I know, it should be uh, AC. I'll tell you what, we'll measure AC and DC. Okay, I'm going to plug it in from across the room. There should be nothing that's going to short. And if it doesn't go bang, I'll measure these two points here. Right, I'm plugging it in now. Right, it hasn't gone bang yet. It's making noise. No, I'm not happy with that. It was uh, making quite a bit of noise. Right, I'm unplugging it. I'm going to put it back together, see if it's working on DC. Because the problem I've got is there's no uh, there's no load on there. Yeah, let's put it back together. See if it works on DC. And whilst I'm struggling to put this back together along with his eight springs, that's right, eight, I'll give a shout out to the my mate Vince Massive, a group of people that are highly unlikely to come after me for subsidence claims. The members are kitdigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Chris Seal, Felipe at mrkeebs.com, DJ VG, Pigsy, Robert from Timsey's Auto Air, Daniel Watson, Anthony Dean, Bazza 2, Russ Mellinson, Gaspar Heller, Ricard Berglund, Jacob Culpin, Matt Rawlins, Soul Reaver 555, and Dorian from Hoover Lux Restorations. Many thank you guys. Right, it's just a couple of screws in just to uh, keep it together at the back here. Right, that appears to be working. So let's put the voltage into it now. Yay, there we go. See the lights came on for a second there? So when you plug it in, lights came on. Right, let's uh, do these. Let's see if it starts doing something. Two lights. Three lights, no, two lights, three lights. Result. Here we go, so it's charging. I'm just gonna get a, an 18650, just to see if that, uh, if that charges. Right, here we go, 18650, negative, positive, negative, positive. Yep. And there we go. You can see now that it's, uh, that it's charging there. Fantastic. Hopefully you can see that. Right, so I need to buy one of these. They're only, I think, 40 or 50p, but that's when I do like a big order. Otherwise I'm gonna get charged like a handling fee and a delivery fee as well. I'm not gonna buy it right now, so you just have to believe me. Well, you can see it's working. It wasn't working before. When I put it in, I presume the AC side of it's gonna work, but I don't actually know that. But again, it can be a revisit video in the future. So when I have like a bulk order of stuff, then I'll add one of those in on that order. I can't see them for sale on eBay right now. I can from China, but not from the UK, but I haven't really done a huge amount of searching, but 50 of them from China was something like I don't know, £10 or something like that, but I don't need 50 of them. I'm happy to pay 40 or 50p for one when I do my bulk order next time. So uh, I don't quite know why that stopped it from working. I understand that it was shorted because for once I managed to do a YouTube style fix where the FLIR cam actually worked. Annoyingly, my finger kind of felt the heat already, hence the reason I've got the FLIR cam out. But sure enough, it showed the faulty component on here. And how many years have I been attempting fixes? And I don't think the FLIR cam has come to my rescue at any other time. So I'm well pleased about that. At long last, I've had a FLIR cam fix, which is fantastic. But uh, why it caused the problem, I'm not too sure. It could have just gone from manufacturing, might have been faulty, but this is what I don't understand. I can kind of get my head around maybe the DC not working because as the 12 volt comes in, it then goes through the diode and into the AC side of the circuit, or sorry, as far as the transformer. And maybe, it, maybe it's trying to power that transformer back to front and it's draining all the energy away from it so the power's not getting down to here. I kind of get that. I waffled on here for a little while, so I tried to speed it up a little bit. What I don't understand is why the AC side of it wasn't working, because this diode now is just acting as a wire. And if we have the negative and the positive coming out of that transformer with 12 volts, I presume it's gonna be something like that, why then, if it's just connected via a wire, 
is it not working? So I kind of get why the DC didn't work if it's connected via wire to AC, but if the AC is going through and the positive is joining up with where the 12 volts would have been from the DC, that makes no sense to me. I would have thought the AC would have worked in this instance and the DC not. Please add it down to the comments below because if I'm confused, other people who are at my level and below will also be confused. So uh, yeah, I will buy one of these and put it in and I think it will work. To me, it points as though it's just maybe from manufacturer this has gone faulty. Uh, I think this can do 80 volts at two amps. So it's a pretty beefy diode. So maybe it was just faulty from the very beginning. It was only a matter of time before it went. Maybe as soon as it was plugged in a couple of times, it went. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna finish up this video now. So this item is working as far as the video is concerned, but obviously it's not fixed because I need to put another diode in it. But we've definitely proved the fault onto the diode. If there's other faults, then when I get one of these diodes, then what I'll do is if it's still not working, I'll put it in a revisit video further down the line. Well, I can honestly say that that was one of my most enjoyable videos because everything just had a complete honest thought that you could get your head around on every single one of them. So my favorite by far had to be this because the item itself I thought was quite interesting. Followed by this one because I got to use the Fleur cam. Followed by this one. I even enjoyed this one here because you could just use your eyes. You didn't need any specialist tools, just use your eyes and it completely shows you what the problem is. This one here was nothingness. I think it was a bit of plastic swarf or something. So I think that one had already cleared itself by the time I took it apart. Now value wise, this isn't really true because the thing is I bought the whole box of stuff for £50 and there's much more items than this in it but saying that the guy the seller because he watched my first video which was a genuine box did me a bit of a favor by putting better stuff in it because I think he probably made quite a few sales from that first video or maybe he likes the videos and he wanted to uh, you know good do a good deed for me so it's kind of a pointless about me talking whether you can make money on the box or not but just to finish off the video I'm going to roughly see what they cost and then uh, second hand although some of these look brand new I'm sure you'd only get maybe a third or half off the value, but I'm still thinking that what we've got here will probably pay. Well, I know, because I know that this is 140 pounds, so even if you've got 40 or 50 pounds for it, it's gonna pay for the whole box, but just humor me. So basically, with the Nightcore one, they're currently on Amazon for 25 pounds. So we'll just put in 25 pound, and then we'll deduct everything at the end. Let me look up the other ones. That is 23 pounds, 35 pounds. And this one here is 138 pounds. So plus 138 equals 221. Let's divide that by three to get a third. So yeah, about 73 pound. I think it'd be quite believable that you would make 73 pound on these, but obviously you'd have to take into account PayPal and eBay fees, which will knock it down probably to 50-ish pounds, and that will bring you to the price of the box. So uh, yeah, that is it. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this one. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. I've got plenty more to get through in that box. I might even start on other items right now. So hopefully you'll see another video in the next couple of weeks or so. Take care, everyone.